All right. So now we have a basic understanding about what is Docker and what AWS dot JSON. What are all the different keywords which can be need to be defined as per the need, right? So now let us define that for our uh, Docker Compose. So it's basically like translating this into that format. So copy, uh, like create the new file, save it. So make sure that it is in the uh, very level where the project is there. Docker run dot AWS dot JSON. Okay. So since this is a JSON format, we'll be denoting everything within the curl brackets and the key value pairs. So the first one is curl brackets. First keyword is AWS EB Docker run version. It should be two because it is multi-container app. Then the container definitions, which is an array. So in this array, we'll be having three elements. Each element is uh, a description about each container the web container, DB container, and cache container. Okay, so container definitions. Okay, which is an array denoted by square brackets. Then curl brackets, three curl brackets. Okay, so let us fill in this first. So the first one is environment. So let us try to define the uh, specifications for our PostgreSQL database, for which we have the environment variables as Postgres user, Postgres password, and pa Postgres DB. We, be, we are having these environment variables. So we need to define the values for the same. So environment colon. This is also an array which has three elements one for the user, one for the password, and the other for the database. Okay, so the first one is, so these will be denoted by name and value. So the name is the environment variable name, postgres, postgres user, value, values, hello flask if you remember. Okay, so the first one is over. Then the second one. Second one is again the name. This time this is Postgres password. And value. Hello Flask. Now, DB. Values. Hello Flask. Okay, so this is the first key value pair uh, definition in the Postgres. So this is essential, essential, right? Means this can't crash, essential true. Then image, it is present in the Docker Hub. So name of that image is Postgres 12 Alpine. Then memory, ended. Then mount points. This is an array in which we will specify container path. Okay, it should be within this container path where lib. Postgres will data and source volume is Postgres data. Okay. okay. 
So this is the same as this part, right? So we are done till this part. We need to tell this. Okay. So the name of the service is db. We forgot to put the comma. Then the name of the service is db. Then port mappings. Container port 5432. Host port. Okay, so the definition for one of the containers is done, right? So this is for database. Then we shall proceed to define the container definition for Redis. Okay, so it is essential. That is true. Then the image. We will be getting it from the Docker Hub, and the name of that image is Redis six point zero point eight. Okay, then memory. Then the name Redis. Then both mappings container port which is six three seven nine similarly host port six three seven nine okay then we are done with defining the environment variables uh, and like all the specifications necessary for Redis. Now this is the time for the other thing. Now let us proceed to define the third container, which is for the web service. So it is essential, obviously. So set it to true. Then links. So the links for this, uh, like it depends on the db service and also on the redis service redis db okay then the name of this is web then image so this is the image which was built by travis and was pushed onto the Git, uh, docker hub so if you remember, uh, that is for me, it is WagDBK user wish list. Uh, you can quickly go through that uh, Docker Hub and cross check it. Okay, so this is the one. This thing. All right, so mention that. So using this image, um, things will be set up by AWS to deploy our app while deploying our app, okay? Now uh, we are done with writing the image, then memory, right? then port mappings, container port, post port 80 okay so we are done with defining these the container definitions then lastly we have volumes to define so in docker compose we have defined this volume section so similarly we have to do that here 
so volumes post is source path okay source path is express data in is the same now save it sometimes you might feel it difficult to write the docker and dot aws dot json uh, some pretty errors which might stall us from deploying out to, uh, it onto the aws so here is a very good repository for that so this is kind of software which we can use to convert the docker compose file into the uh, aws so uh, you can use it so here it is a very useful tool we need to push this onto the docker hub so that these this change of adding the docker and dot aws dot json will be detected by travis and the travis continues to make its checks and uh, deploy that onto the aws now on uh, deploying to the aws aws checks this docker and dot aws dot json file and based on the specifications made on this it sets up the multi container app ready for us to use it on the cloud okay now go to console okay git status so we have added this that is what is being shown here git add docker run git status again so now it is being tracked git commit minus n added docker run dot aws dot json file git push origin so do you remember the name of the branch this is the one multi cont app okay so now go to the travis we expect to detect uh, we expect the changes to be detected by the travis automatically let us go to github first so here it is showing 44 seconds ago it is changed right with this commit so yeah all right you can also see the configurations of the travis file and this is the build config so if you see this is the travis a travis file in yaml uh, and this is in kind of json for the travis file so it is internally converting this to that right and also a quick trick for you so we can validate if our json formatting is correct or not using json lint okay so go to this and uh, go to the json file which we have defined till now this is the one so select everything uh, use control and a use control and c to copy it now go to uh, the json lint site paste it here and uh, click on validate json so it shows that it is a valid json the reason why i am telling is uh, this is if the json format which we have used is not correct in the sense like if we missed any comma or if we missed any formatting something like that um, it takes a whole lot of time to detect that because if the json format is not valid it the aws elastic beanstalk can't, can't deploy this uh, this app onto the aws okay but for the deployment it might take a lot of time so it is a uh, time wastage and resource wastage so it is a good practice to check or validate your json file uh, before deploying it okay so you can use this site so in the meanwhile it is happening here it might take some time
Okay, so it shows your build exited with zero. So let us go to so let us go to AWS. So this was our previous build, right? Now it detected automatically. Uh, like Travis was deploy Travis is deploying this onto the AWS. So the environment is getting updated. Let us open this. And yes, we are able to uh, deploy the app on the AWS, right? So let us create uh, the user. Save. So it successfully saved the data. And when we get the keys, so this is the thing which it has stored, all right? So now when I click on the same user, ideally we should get the response from Redis, okay? Because when we have stored the record into the database, we are concurrently uh, storing it in the Redis also for faster access in the future. If I type something which is not yet there, so it's, it says it is not yet defined, all right?